It was a rough day for the offense, but Joe Burrow was present. We'll update you on his status as he took wind sprints with the team on his golf cart. Wasn't actually running. Plus, the offense did not have a great day. Those will be the focuses of today's episode of Locked on Bengals. You are Locked on Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine, hydrating after another day of covering Cincinnati Bengals training camp here on the Lockdown podcast. It was Network. human today, Jake. Human, human, human. We cover your team, the Cincinnati Bengals, every day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube, regardless of the humidity outside. <laughs> we will be here for you. James, the offense had a tough day. That's why Joe Burrow was going back and forth on his cart. But before we get into the Joe Burrow update, I understand that you have a very important note to put out to the world. Yeah, it's a big day for, for Carrie Ann. She turned eight on Thursday, got to, to meet her mom at Bengals practice. And she listens to Locked on Bengals regularly, so I had to give her a shout out. Our, us Leos have to stick together. My birthday is Friday. And so I'm a bit older, and by a bit, I mean a lot older than you, Carrie Ann. But hopefully you uh, had a wonderful time at training camp and had a wonderful birthday. Not very many eight-year-olds listening to our show, as far as we know. But if you have an eight-year-old or somebody in that age range listening to our show, that's nice. We'll, we'll <laughs> do our best to shout those out when we can, because it's, it's always nice to, to hear about those sorts of things. Joe Burrow, nice to see him back around the locker room, back on the practice field on Thursday as well. No longer with a bandage and whatever was under that bandage on his arm. Looked a little bit more comfortable moving around. No grimaces that I saw caught on video anyway. And I thought a little bit of a sense of humor at the end of practice while the offense ran its wind sprints for losing the red zone portion of practice, the loser having to take wins for instance, Joe going back and forth on his cart, driving to keep pace, which I wonder, I wonder about that, but it was, it was pretty funny nonetheless, but good to see him out there and, and good to see him moving a little bit better as he works his way back from whatever happened in that appendectomy. Yeah. And he uh, walked through the locker room during the open locker room portion of practice, sat at his locker for a little bit, and I was talking to another player at the moment. And so I couldn't get over there to, to you know, wish him well. It wouldn't have been anything. You know, he's not going to give you any info or any news or anything. But it was very clear he didn't have that line in his arm. Uh, there was no bandage, no nothing. Uh, and, yeah, I looked. Oh, I looked to see if there's anything in either arm. So, you know, that's, that's good. And, and maybe what they were doing is just giving him extra – you know, antibiotics to make sure there was nothing post-surgery, which makes sense. He's a professional football player. Guess what you don't want? Uh, any kind of infection, any kind of anything uh, that could derail his chances of, of starting the season on time. So they probably just took a cautious approach there. Uh, but look, I, I think that when this initially happened, a lot of us Googled, you know, or, or knew someone or ha has had this surgery done and had an appendectomy. And like, ah, it's not that serious. It'd be fine. It'd be good in a week. I I'm guilty of it. I thought it too. And that's just not the case. Clearly it took, uh, you know, more out of him uh, than just his appendix, right? It took some energy. It took some weight. It took some, you know, and I don't know if he actually weighs less. He does look a little leaner, but he's just moving a little slower right now. But he looks much better than he did on Monday, which I think is the, or Tuesday, Monday, which is the encouraging thing because it, you want to see him continue to improve. And I think he was moving much better. He looked like he had, was a little more energetic on Thursday versus what we saw on Monday. And you would expect there to be some improvement after three days. Good to see that it's trending in the right direction. Not terribly uncommon, to be clear. Very common surgery in the first place. Not terribly uncommon to have extended antibiotic administration after an appendectomy, after discharge. It, it sometimes is, is a, a week-long regimen. We're past a week now from... That surgery, obviously, I guess. So should continue to see improvement from Burrow, but don't necessarily expect him back in practice in the immediate future. He will get back. He will be fine. Conditioning may be a couple weeks behind, right? He, he's unable to really do much working out right now. 
And I'm sure that's incredibly frustrating for him. You know, he took his trainer with him to Vegas, as we've discussed, and it was well documented. He travels with his trainer in the off season to make sure he doesn't miss a workout. So I'm sure he's he's dealing with some some mental struggle, some mental frustration, not being able to get that work in. But I'm sure he's also taking that energy and putting it in to his work because that is the kind of player that Joe Burrow is. He's the kind of guy that comes back from an ACL injury early and takes his team to the Super Bowl. And this is just an appendectomy by comparison. He'll be just fine. Yeah, he will. And I think it's it's good to, to have him out there. We'll see if he's out there again Friday. I, I was talking with some of the writers before practice. I'm like, oh, I think he's going to be out there today. Yesterday was like an off day, right? They, they came in, but there was no practice. They just do some film and stuff. I bet he was energized after being inside on Tuesday, wanted to get out there. So not shocked at all uh, that he came out, that he observed practice. So we'll, we'll see if he's out there Friday. And the good news is the way this camp is structured, it's – a lot of two days on, one day off. And so he might be able to be out there. Now, how much does he get out of it? How much do his teammates get out of it? I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, I think it is good for him to still be around. I just do. He's the franchise. And I know that, uh, you know, the crowd went wild. The kids uh, in the stands were like, where's Joe Burrow? Where's Joe Burrow? And then when he finally came out, you know, everyone knew where Joe was and all eyes were on Joe. So uh, certainly good to, to have him out there. As long as it's not taking a, any kind of physical toll on him, I don't think it is. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if he's out there uh, multiple times over the next few days and uh, continues to improve at the same time. And and his teammates have indicated, or at least they did on Monday, that his presence energized the offense, energized the team in general. Intensity stepped up a little bit with his presence. So that didn't seem to happen. In the offense's favor anyway on Thursday, it sounds like it was a very rough day for the offense, particularly the offensive line, even Joe Mixon having some issues in pass protection, which Ooh. after the investment in the offensive line, and I know Lel Collins is still not working and Alex Cap is still working his way back, you're hoping to see some more development from these young guys instead of getting beat over and over, which was unfortunately – the case on Thursday, we're going to dive into the trench play and what went down in the 11 on 11 drills officiated by the way, in the Bengals second padded practice, Super Bowl referee, Ron Tolbert there with a number of other NFL officials to blow the whistle. And sounds like it wasn't great for the offense. We'll dive into what went wrong coming up next level with me. We've all been in a situation where you need a little extra cash right? Maybe you're, it, things are tight, but you need some gas for your car or you need to pay off a bill or a credit card or something in between. Well, hindsight is 2020 and you can't change the past, but you can get things straight with Dave. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need and you can too by downloading the dave app from the app store right now it's d-a-v-e and sign up for an extra cash account and you're going to get up to 500 dollars instantly for terms and conditions go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees apply banking provided by evolve member fdic future you will thank you with dave a rough day for the offense on Thursday, multiple interceptions for Brandon Allen, multiple sacks allowed by various offensive linemen, multiple false start penalties, and Joe Burrow's not out there. I get it. Things are skewed in the defense's favor in the first place. Maybe the defense is even still in that part of the padded practice portion of training camp where they're just ahead as they seem to be every year. A lot of factors going the defense's way, but the one that stands out as worrisome is that Jonah Williams having a hard time with Trey Hendrickson in team drills. And Trey Hendrickson is a fantastic player, but Jonah Williams looked great in one-on-ones the other day. Looked absolutely fantastic against both Trey Hendrickson and Joseph Osai. Worrisome that Jackson Carmen is getting beat by interior defenders in pass rushing situations. Worrisome that Isaiah Prince is, is getting whooped by, by Joseph Osai in some senses. I mean, on the other hand, it's promising that these Cincinnati Bengals are generating a pass rush, but it's the same story. It was 
a refrain that I was hoping we wouldn't repeat this year where early in training camp when the pads come on, the Bengals pass rush looks great again and the pass blocking has been suspect or porous. And we thought this would be the year, James, when we wouldn't have to spend a whole lot of time. How many times have you said in the last month, I don't want to be talking about the offensive line this year. And here we Mm -hmm. are in the second segment of the second padded practice recap talking about the offensive line. Yeah, they were bad. Let's be honest. You know, Jonah was bad. He had a bad practice, you know, compared to what he could play at. Uh, And it doesn't start with him, right? The the thing is, is guys like Akeem Adeniji and Isaiah Prince, you wanted to see them take a step and be like serviceable backups. Well, if Joseph Osai can hit you with a little outside inside move where he's just one, two, step inside, swim, boom, gone, done, can't happen. And it did. And I think Joseph Osai is a good player, was impressed by him. But I shouldn't be that impressed by him. I shouldn't be looking at my roster. And yes, there's 90 players. So you look at the roster and say, oh, Raymond Johnson, the third beating Jackson Carmen multiple times. I shouldn't notice that. And yet that was what happened, right? It's like, oh, 69, oh, 69 again. Who's he going up against? 79. I, that can't happen. Um, Jackson Carmen was on the ground too often. I thought during uh, just the team portion during one-on-ones, general blocking situations where you don't want to be on your back or on the ground, got called for a holding penalty at one point where DJ Reader just right through him. Um, so look, you're right. There's a deja vu feel to it. I still think it is early enough in practice because this is their second padded practice early enough to where the defense is ahead of the offense. The Brandon Allen factor does matter. Um, all of these things impact it. You know, Lyle Collins not being out there, Alex Kappa getting his legs under him still. Real factors, not excuses, reasons. But it does feel too familiar. And especially when we go back to what we when we last saw this team play meaningful snaps, what we saw. Look, we, we have a, a a sore spot in Cincinnati. And there's a sore spot in Cincinnati for offensive line play. And I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon unless they just prove and show week in, week out that they can be this really good pass blocking team um, and run blocking team. And we didn't see that for most of of Thursday's practice. But I don't want to be completely negative because one thing that they did struggle with last year that I thought they were pretty good at on, on Thursday, especially early, they did third and short and fourth and short, and they were getting those early. They were getting the push needed uh, to pick up those first downs. Uh, that kind of stalled out towards the end of the drill, but early on, I, I think I kind of the offense was like five, winning five nothing early, and, and and so they did have some good moments. It's not all awful, but there was more bad than good, and uh, that should be expected to a degree, I guess. When you don't have Collins and Kappa's working his way back. But it leaves you feel, feeling a little uneasy, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. I mean, there was a kid in the stands by me, like, that offensive line just got obliterated. And, well, we'll use shout-out to that kid who said the offensive line just got obliterated because he wasn't wrong. Yeah, it looks like it was all over the place from, from what I've seen, from what I've read, from what you've described. And hopefully there there's a better day coming because Willie Anderson was in attendance watching – the backup right tackle, have issues with Sam Hubbard, have issues with Joseph Osai. You, you mentioned Raymond Johnson the third. We've heard over and over throughout camp to this point that Zach Carter has been very disruptive. He's had a great camp by yeah. all accounts, a third round rookie. He was good today too, no doubt. Continuing to cause problems. DJ Reader is incredible, continues to cause problems. VJ Hill, I've seen him win a number of reps in in trench drills. And so on the one hand, like we said, it's great that the defensive line has had some early success here. But as you said, James, it, it is a bit of a sore spot. So we would like to see Carmen Williams improve. We would like to see Collins get back into practice. We would like to see Joe Mixon improving his blitz pickups. And this is a a point of emphasis for Mixon. This is something that we've talked about 
as he tries to stay on the field for more of those third downs, for more of those two minute situations where he said, yeah, I wish I had said something at the end of the Super Bowl so that I would have been on the field for those plays. And on Thursday, again, this, this ends up being a negative segment, but Mixon absolutely whiffs on a big blitz pickup, goes the wrong way, and has a lengthy conversation with his coach afterward trying to iron it out. Sounds like a little bit animated conversation with running backs coach to, to try to figure it out. And again, it's, it's stuff like this where, you know, maybe it's communication issues with Brandon Allen out there early in camp this and that lots of excuses you could point to lots of time for things to get better too. And that is absolutely a true part of this is where we are in camp. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is uh, an omen for the regular season or anything like that. But when it does happen, like Jamar Chase's drops last year, which we dismissed as a non-concern for the most part, or at least I did for the most part, you've got to at least talk about it. And it could be that the refrain that we have been repeating that we've liked repeating they've invested in this offensive line. It will be better. It could be that that is true in a few weeks at the end of preseason, when we start to get to regular season games, when the full offensive line is playing together, when things have crystallized, when Joe Burrow is back, it could be that we look back at this time, the way we look back at Jamar Chase's drops last year and kind of laugh at ourselves. Remember when people were concerned about Jamar Chase's drops, maybe that's how this goes, but right now it needs to get better couple things. One, Jamar Chase had about 50,000 drops in, in practice that no one talked about. I mentioned on the pod. I don't think anyone else even mentioned it for a long time. And then it bled into preseason. But yeah. the difference is, is he was great before that. This Bengals offensive line hasn't been great for more than half a decade. Locked on Bengals didn't exist the last time this Bengals offensive line was just okay. All right. So that's part of it. Um, but – Look, it, it is one practice, so that's the other part. As far as the Joe Mixon play goes, it was pretty simple. Jermaine Platt, Pratt was blitzing, and it was in between Ted Karras and Akeem Adenogy, and Adenogy was obviously at right guard and just untouched. I don't know what Mixon was thinking, um, but he went. He was on that side. He was to the right of Karras, but Pratt went right through. And so I don't know if he just didn't want to hit him. I don't know what it was. Like, it's not like he went completely the wrong way. Um, Cause I went back and watched the video, but the video is focused on Allen. And, and I, I saw a little bit of mix and then he leaves the frame. And then Pratt is right there. Like Pratt would have ran through Brandon Allen. We might be talking fumble, certainly a sack right away, seven yard loss at minimum, but it, he could have blown him up and maybe forced him to fumble. So just a, an awful play that you de definitely don't want to see happen in a real game to any quarterback, but certainly not uh, Joey Franchise, who's obviously still healing. Some other highlights for the defense that I want to make sure we mention. Dax Hill had great coverage on Jamar Chase in a one-on-one -on -one drill early in practice, and this is notable because Dax Hill got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Jamar Chase. You'll love to see it. A couple other interceptions out there for the defense that I mentioned at the top, and the other note on the defense that I found quite interesting is George Allen, who was a college free agent that the Bengals signed out of Vanderbilt, was getting reps with the first team with Eli Apple missing and Trey Flowers missing. Instead of Cam Taylor Britt, and I just mentioned yesterday how excited I was to see Cam Taylor Britt get some of those opportunities. He's still working with the second team, and early in camp this may not mean anything, but Allen George is impressing at least someone. And it sounds like he's actually been relatively impressive overall in training camp, earning those opportunities to get on the field. So there's another college free agent, another guy that will just put that name out there because it sounds like he's at least earned the respect of the coaches in terms of getting those first team reps. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I got to say, it was a huge surprise to have Alan George out there instead of Cam Taylor Britt. Lou Anarumo kind of downplayed it afterwards. We'll see. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we'll see how significant it is. But yeah. it's it, it's not nothing. It's something. Uh, speaking of something, there's uh, some injury updates, uh, a lot of tight end stuff we need to dive into, and uh, we'll do that and more coming up next right here on Locked On Bengals. But first, a word from Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to track all of your betting needs. Whether you want to wager on the NBA, 
which I won big money on the finals, baby. Yeah, I did. NFL, maybe you think Joey B is going to be MVP. Uh, NHL, Major League Baseball, are you all in on the Padres? Because the Padres are certainly all in. You could wager on them to beat the Dodgers and win the National League. That and so much more, plus combat sports, esports, golf in one spot, bet online. So go there now, sign up for free, and get rolling so you can get that money, baby. Bet online where the game starts. You mentioned an injury at the tight end position. And we'll start there for our final segment of the show. Tight end Drew Sample needed to be carted off the field. From what I saw, it looked like he was having a bit of an issue, putting weight, I believe, on an injured left leg. We don't have any sort of details really about that injury at this point in time other than that he had to leave practice. And the brief video I saw, which would have occurred pretty quick after that injury would have occurred, he, he was having a little bit of trouble really putting much weight on that leg using a trainer for support and was shortly thereafter carted off. So regardless of what you think of Drew Sample, whose fan club, according to James Rapine, I lead, he is the likely best blocking tight end on this team. He did have, does have, I think in the eyes of the coaches, a very clear role for this team. And if he does need to miss significant time, there is a huge window for guys like Thad Moss, Mitchell Wilcox, even Scotty Washington to some degree. And you could also talk about Nick Eubanks or Justin Rigg here, the other street and college free agents that are rounding out the Bengals tight end depth chart right now. But it's an opportunity for some of those guys while we keep an eye on Drew Sample's health. It is, for sure. And Thad Moss had a good day. He he caught a, a screen pass in traffic, broke a tackle from Clay Johnston, and, and would have taken it for a first down and then some. Had a couple other catches in team drills. Uh, so that's certainly worth noting. Mitch Wilcox, obviously a big part of the Bengals special teams unit a year ago. Uh, and he's the guy who beat out Thad. Uh, so they have guys, right? Um, but can any of those guys do what? You know, Drew Sample does well, especially because Hayden Hurst, guess what he's not known for? His blocking. He's known for his athleticism, his ball skills, which were on full display again, despite the offensive struggles on Thursday. He had a really nice catch, Brandon Allen uh, throwing it uh, to him on the sideline. Daxton Hill was on Hayden Hurst's back. I mean, he was great coverage, and Hurst was able to uh, lay out, catch it, get both feet down. Officials were there, called it inbound. So really nice catch. I did tweet that one out. It's like a four second clip worth checking out. So um, look, the tight end room I thought was kind of shallow coming in anyways, right? You had Hayden Hurst, Drew Sample. What does he give you in the passing game? It's kind of a, you know, blocking and then that's it. Uh, so as of now, knowing the Bengals, I think they'll take a look at some of these other guys, give Mitch Wilcox and Thad Moss increased roles and, and see if those guys could take advantage of it. But uh, hopefully we'll have an update on Drew Sample. On, on Friday. It looked like his left knee uh, from what I saw, but you, you didn't really see much. And then, so, you know, he was suddenly being carted off the field. So it wasn't like there was, it's not like practice stopped, right? Like it is done um, with other guys, it, you know, practice continued to roll on. So hopefully it's uh, nothing serious and, and hopefully he's back out there soon. Yeah, that is certainly the hope because even regardless of what you think of Drew Sample, he, like I said, has a very clear role on this team. And as you said, James, the depth is questionable, is unproven, we could say. Well, you mentioned well, it's two high... undrafted guys. Th Thad yeah. Moss and, and Mitch Wilcox are both undrafted. So Well, you, and you, know, you can people... go even further and look at other undrafted guys, Scotty Washington, it, Justin Rigg. Yeah, and people might say, oh, well, Drew Sample shouldn't have been a second-round pick. Like, I get that grape. He's mm -hmm. still an NFL player. Like he's he's deserves to be in the league. He's worth being one of the fifty three. Like that that part isn't debatable. Did they mm -hmm. draft him too high? Maybe, but that was years ago. So let's move on from that. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he's gonna be a part of this team one way or another in twenty twenty two. You mentioned a highlight for Hayden Hurst that reminds me of another highlight. Chris Evans had a really nice run. Yeah, um, one did. of the better blocked plays of the day, bouncing outside yeah. on the left side of outside zone. He talked about spending some time this offseason improving his ability to read and react to that blocking scheme. So a little bit of an adjustment for Chris Evans, potentially, that could pay dividends. As we talked about the running back depth chart uh, this week as well. The other injury update, though, was 
uh, Alex Kappa continuing to work back and, and participate a little bit more every day, just increasing, ramping up that participation in practice. T Higgins out there in pads and did not participate still in team drills, but a step in the right direction for T. And it sounds like it may still be a little bit of time before T gets back and the way they've treated Alex Kappa, you could see how there could be a similar trajectory for T Higgins where, there is a slow acclimation, slow reacclimation period for T. Higgins as they try to make sure he doesn't sustain an unnecessary rush back injury in training camp. And the final update here that I've got, James, that we talked about before the show is Logan Wilson back and participating in some seven on seven stuff as he, like Kappa and T. Higgins, continues to work his way back from his injury. Yep, talk to Logan after practice. He's feeling good. Uh, this was kind of on, on schedule, uh, and I posted the video, by the way, if those are – you don't want to check that out. But, yeah, he's uh, he's good. He, he said he'd be good if he doesn't play in the preseason at all, and so I don't necessarily think he's going to play a ton in the preseason. I do think that at that six-month mark, so probably mid to late August – I mean, I, I would imagine he had that surgery within maybe a week of the Super Bowl. I would say, uh, so I would say probably end of August, uh, you know, August 20th on, we could see him in 11 on 11. Maybe he does take a few preseason snaps at the end there. Um, but honestly, I would want to have him up and running for those joint practices against the Rams, assuming they're true joint practices. So we'll see, we'll see. But he, he said he's good to go. They're just kind of following a plan. It's not like he can't hit. It's just more so than much like T, you know, going through, uh, the steps in the plan that they laid out pre-training camp. Yeah, a lot of soft tissue injuries around the NFL right now, a lot of non-contact injuries around the NFL right now, and the Bengals have long, under Zach Taylor's regime anyway, taken an approach of trying to keep guys healthy and fresh in training camp and practices in general. Last note for me, James, I've seen a few things, and we should have probably put this earlier in the show, to be honest, but I've seen a few, a few things that have really caught my eye because – Mike Hilton and Dax Hill had pass breakups against Jamar Chase today. The most likely way, and obviously Mike Hilton faced him in the slot, but the most likely way that Dax Hill gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Jamar Chase would be from a tight or slot alignment as well. We've talked about Jamar Chase getting into the slot a little bit more, using him as a versatile weapon, using him as more of a move piece to draw mismatches where you can get them in. One, credit Mike Hilton, who had a big day for getting that pass break up on Jamar Chase, and Dax Hill for playing sticky coverage on Jamar Chase. But two, and perhaps more interestingly, depending on your perspective, Jamar Chase getting some additional reps in the slot. And that will be something, that I think I mentioned this last week, that we continue to monitor is where these guys are aligning and how they're being deployed throughout camp as that provides some hints for some of the wrinkles that may be coming for this offense in 2022. Yeah. Are you talking about the one where Brandon Allen threw it about 10 minutes late and uh, Hilton came back and batted it down? I'm just, I'm just, I'm talking I'm about asking. the alignment more than anything else. All, all no. I know is Mike Hilton had a pass break up on a pass We're, intended for Jamar Chase. Okay. I wonder which one you're talking about. It's, it's tough to, anyways. Yeah. I don't think Chase caught a ball on 11s. Um, and, and I don't know how much of that's actually on him. Uh, yeah. That's how bad the offense was today. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to move him all around. I think Chase is going to be – honestly, his role is going to be Jamar Chase of 2021, Cooper Cup of 2021, and Debo Samuel of 2021. And That's now I don't think he's going to get 12 handoffs, <laughs> but like I think they're like, man, we could get him the ball all these different ways because defenses are going to adjust and say, all right, Jamar, you, you are not beating us deep, so you're going to have to get you, – you know, it's like Tyreek Hill with the Chiefs. He caught a lot of screen passes. It, was, it wasn't all go balls. Right now, the scary part is is his deep threat, but they got they found different ways to get him the ball. I think the Bengals are going to do that as well. Yeah, I think that is absolutely true. I'm excited to just see where Jamar continues to line up throughout camp and and the kinds of looks he gets. I'm sure that there will be stuff we don't see that gets uncorked in the regular season as well as his role develops as he develops as a player and he looks good. And it's been one of the big stories of training camp is just how good and refined and developed Jamar Chase looks. And he was already great, obviously, as a rookie. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked on Bengals podcast. The Bengals keep practicing and we keep going. We're on a five-day-a-week schedule, so our next episode drops 
on Sunday afternoon. We'll be back for five episodes next week. Until next time, our training camp coverage will continue. I promise you that. Thanks for listening to the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Who day and have a good one.